Okay, we are back in action. Welcome back to Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony while we are on the lovely closing argument of the class trial. So we gotta figure out what the heck we are doing here. So let's figure out where removing the floorboard, hit the sliding lock, and removed the katana is what I've got. So I'm assuming that this is just him cutting the floorboard right now. No. Oh, I'm wrong already. We're out here. So if I lose, so I had to, in order to make this happen, right? I had to like fake die so that I could save. Um, and if I lose, if I lose three HP, then it's like, this is totally worth it. Then I just, it is totally good. Okay. The lock. Can I get the lock? That's the front lock. This will be them stabbing it into. Right? Yes, okay. And then, the small stone that Kimiko brought. The removed floorboard. So we gotta figure out... That's Kimo seesaw, or Kyo seesawing. Tempo. So the removed floorboard is before, right? Like, well before. Yeah, there we go. Cool, cool, cool. What? Oh, here's the one. Okay. The gold, removing the gold leaf katana, which would have been later on. The duct tape. I'm gonna laugh. I'm actually not gonna. Sickle placed to kill. So this would have been later. The magic circle. This was earlier, right? No, it wasn't because... Okay, it was not. It was back over here. Not part of the floorboard. No way. Can't believe it's not right there. Uh, cut cross piece under the floor. That would be near the beginning. Footsteps contaminating the scene of the crime. That would be after everybody ran in, right? And then, oh, all the way around. Kokichi's lockpicking. That would be at the beginning when we discovered the death. So that would be here. Stab Kaede's effigy up at the front right here. Damn, we actually did so good. We actually would not have died. That's wild. That's actually wild. We wouldn't have died here. That's crazy. I actually took an unnecessary punishment for having to restart. Oof. But that's okay. It was late last night. The culprit was in the empty room on the fourth floor. The culprit was preparing the seance murder they had planned. Also, I just want to point out as well... I think that is the first time that I've noticed that on the li there's like a little speech bubble thing for like what they're doing. To that helped me out a lot. As a seesaw, they had to cut the cross piece supporting it. The plan was to make the same preparations for all three empty rooms. This would divert suspicion away from the culprit and whoever picked a room. To cut the cross pieces, they needed a saw. I imagine they got one from the warehouse. They were planning to cut the cross pieces in all three rooms. However, when the culprit was working on the middle room, the unexpected happened. Angie walked into that room and saw the culprit making their preparations. She needed some fire for the ritual and had gone to the room for a candle. At that point, the culprit had not finished the setup and was just cutting cross pieces. Angie might not have concluded that it was tied to some kind of murder plan. But now that Angie had seen it, the culprit couldn't use the seesaw trick. Any other person might have just given up, but not our culprit. The culprit took the floorboard they loosened 
and struck the unsuspecting Angie in the head. The culprit did not want to give up on their plan and had to improvise. They wrapped duct tape around Angie's injury to stop the bleeding. Then they picked up her unconscious body and carried her to a research lab. While she was unconscious, the culprit hurried to tie up this loose end. But because they were in a hurry, they made a crucial oversight. They didn't notice the duct tape had peeled off and was under Angie's body. Without that evidence, we may never have figured out the culprit's trick. Carrying the supplies they needed, the culprit returned to the ultimate art lab. Lock the front door from inside. And took out the katana they brought from their own lab. They then stabbed Angie in the back of the neck, finally killing her. Then, to further confuse us, the culprit attempted to make a locked room mystery. First, they used rope from the warehouse and hung four effigies upside down. There were two reasons for this. To overwhelm the room with an occult atmosphere. And the other was the key to locking the room. The culprit stuck the katana into Kaede's effigy near the rear entrance. And spun the effigy around to twist up the rope. After enough turns, the culprit let go and headed for the rear door. Once released, the effigy began spinning and the gold leaf katana with it. The handle of the katana then hit the sliding lock, locking the a difficult trick, but remember that the lock was so loose it moved at the slightest touch. The culprit also would have had the opportunity to attempt it many times. Once complete, the door was locked, but the duct tape was left behind. Perhaps the culprit noticed it, but by that point, it was too late. The room was sealed. There was no way for them to get back inside. Then, this morning, we opened up the room and discovered Angie's body. But the culprit wasn't finished. They wanted one more murder. To do that, they manipulated us into performing this seance. Of the three empty rooms, the middle one was chosen for the seance. I was invited by Kokichi to take Kibo's place in the seance. Tenko volunteered to be the medium, but she never imagined it would get her killed. To perform the seance, the culprit claimed they needed something for Tenko. A 
a small stone that Himiko had brought from the courtyard. Tenko, at the culprit's request, bowed her head until it was touching the stone. That position was instrumental in making sure the murder went as planned. Next, Kokichi and I placed the iron cage over Tenko in the middle of the magic circle. The culprit then volunteered to drape the white cloth over the iron cage. We didn't realize it at the time, but that was a deliberate decision by the culprit. They needed to set up the murder weapon that was used to kill Tenko. While they were covering the cage with a cloth, they secretly placed the sickle. Finally, four of us placed the wooden statue on top of the cage. The culprit used the weight of the statue to keep the murder weapon in place. After the preparations were complete, we began the seance. In complete darkness, we each stood in one corner and sang the Caged Child song. When the song finished, the soul of the dead was supposed to enter the medium. But our culprit had another plan, to commit a murder in the darkness. Right after we started singing, the culprit began making their way toward Tenko. It would have been quite difficult to do in total darkness, but our culprit had a guide. They used the lines of the magic circle drawn with salt. The culprit felt for the salt and used it to guide them along. And when the culprit reached the center of the circle, they found the floorboard that had its cross piece cut off the night before. then lifted up their foot and stomped down hard on the floorboard. The floorboard lifted up like a seesaw and pushed Tenko's body up toward the ceiling of the cage. Tenko was stabbed in the back of the neck by the sickle on the top of the cage. She was killed right before our eyes and we didn't even see it. After committing the crime, the culprit followed the salt back to their corner. Finished the ritual and had us light the candles. We followed the culprit's directions and removed the equipment used for the seance. And discovered Tenko's body. While we were all focused on the body, the culprit picked up the sickle and dropped it under the floor through the hole in the corner of the room. Ironically, the final step of the murder was unwittingly carried out by us. The culprit had planned the murder so that we would unintentionally destroy some evidence. That evidence was the magic circle that the culprit used to navigate in the dark. However, the culprit didn't know that Kibo had taken a picture. He really saved us. Without that, we wouldn't know what changes were made to the circle. But now we know for certain, and we know the culprit drew the magic circle.
Kureki Oshinguji, the ultimate anthropologist. You're the culprit behind these murders. Sorry, bestie. It all fits. It does. Bye bye, bestie. <laughs> Sweet Correcchio. There are times when it's necessary to admit defeat. Uh, admit? Yeah. Okay. Finally admit you did it. Unfortunately. Yes. Yes. It's unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. It is, bestie, but it is what it is. My one regret, my only regret, was not being able to make 100 friends. What? 100 friends? It was my dream to make 100 friends. Oh, it's so unfortunate! I was so close to 100! W what are you talking about? I do not understand a word of this. I don't either. Who gives a fuck? Let's vote for this kooky bastard and be done with this already! Roger that! One voting time! Coming up! The heart racing excitement as the heart racing excitement as a blackened and a spotless finally face off. It's voting time. Gosh. Having to legitimately vote out Kyo is so hard to do. It actually is. But it is what it is. Sorry, Kyo. You're the one that did it. It seems the voting has finished. Let's see the result. You marked two people. It's a very you thing to do, unfortunately. I, I I thought that you wouldn't. I thought you'd be smart enough not to. But hey. At least he went out voting himself. Unlike freaking homegirl Karumi, who voted for me because of who just be things. As the blackened? Will I would you make the right choice? Or the dreadfully wrong one. I do like at least that Kyo's going out and knowing. Yeah. Bye, bestie. That's literally the title. For I want it at this at, for this episode. I can actually title it that. Yeah, the retry. Wow, that kicked me down hard. Six thousand. I still got an A. The, uh, could I have S ranked this? Because it says I did good on the trial, but like, okay, but the. By the retry, it's talking about the fact that I had to, like, stop the recording and then redo it. But I think, at least. But hey, I mean, we A-ranked it. That's cool. We got the hidden Monokuma here, too, actually. Which, again, crazy. The, the fact that we actually got one in the trial. Wow! Wow! Seriously, you're correct again! So, okay, Amazing! Right. This is the third correct verdict in a row! Right. You managed to get 12 correct verdicts in a row. If you manage to get 12 correct verdicts in a row, you will proceed to the bonus round! That's literally impossible, Monotaro, but okay. <laughs> How is that, this gonna last that long? For now. It is finally over. No. No. Not yet. I haven't 
heard his answer yet. Kyo, why? Why did you kill Angie and Tenko? Right! Yeah, he no need to kill both, no matter what motive he have. Oh? Motive. Hey! Did your motive have something to do with the transfer students who was resurrected? Even if it did, though, how did you trigger a murder? Hey, hey! Don't tell me! You were actually scared of the resurrection ritual, Kaido! Shut up! Shut up! I said I was never... All right, I never said I was scared. <sighs> the resurrection ritual had nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it? I... Because we're friends, I will tell you I never once believed in the ritual. I would never kill someone over such a silly thing like that. What? <gasps> so it has nothing to do with the motive? Mm -hmm. Then why? Yes. <sighs> For the one that I love. There is someone that I love. What? From the bottom of my heart. Someone so dear. Someone I long for. I love her with all my heart. And she loves me with all her heart. What? Yes. We vowed an endless love to each other. Forever bound by fate. None can come between us. We are bound by an intense love. No matter what anyone says. What? Bragging about your perfect love life? Fuck you! Some of us aren't that lucky. <laughs> so, to see this lover of yours, you had an escape. Don't tell me. Or you had to escape. That is why you killed Angie and Tenko? But why did you kill them both? <laughs> if you asked if I did it to escape this place, oh, my answer would be no. Wonderful. Because I have no need to escape this place. The one I love is inside. Inside? Wait! Don't look at me! I I'm not his lover! Yeah. Calm down. Uh, no one wants a disgusting shit-stuffed bitch like you anyway. There's what? Hey. Kyo, who is it? Who is the person that you love? Is it really one of us? <laughs> when I say it's inside, I do not mean it is inside this academy. You see. I mean, inside me. Sister. Yes, the one that I love lives inside me. My dearest sister. <gasps> so sister. Wait. Don't look at me. I'm not his sister. Right. Well, Duh, if you were his sister, he would have killed himself already. Uh, Wait. Your sister? But didn't you say that she was your lover? Whatever is the matter. <laughs> is it not that difficult? My sister is my lover. What? I loved her so deeply. And she loved me so deeply. The fact that we were siblings meant nothing to us. Huh? They called it forbidden love, but none could stop the love we shared. <laughs> Kyo is really kinky, damn. Oh, how I long for my sister's warmth. The only time I felt at peace was when I was enveloped in my sister's warmth. For my beloved sister. I had to. Always messing around. You had to escape from here, right? No. No. I had to kill for her. Huh? What? Sister. Sister was very sickly. She had always she was always in and out of the hospital ever since she was a child. And because of that, she didn't have many friends. She always seemed so lonely. However, even if I could be her little brother and her lover. I couldn't be her friend. So I thought if I had her or find her some dear or so I thought I'd find her some dear friends. Friends for my dear deceased sister. Oh that makes more sense. Okay. Huh? Deceased? Do you understand? My sister is now a ghost, so for her, friends should be ghosts too, right? For my beloved For sister. my sister's sake, I killed many to send her one hundred friends. <laughs> They were all so wonderful people, worthy of being my sister's friends. Damn, okay, so he's got bloodshed, okay. 
That's more like it. That's what I thought more so. I was like, damn, cute. I'm like, you really think you're about here painting you in a weird light here, but no, okay, that makes more sense. What? Incomprehensible. This is impossible to understand. Too impossible. Sister. Sister was very happy. Yes. Yes, Karekio. I am very happy. Thanks to you, I am not lonely. What? <gasps> could, could it be that lipstick is a version of Kyo is? I am Karekio's older sister. Thank you for looking after my little brother. What? What the hell? Yes. After I lost my beloved sister, I was so distraught, I was nearly went mad. But sister came to save me. I am pleased. She visited me during one of my seances and stayed inside of me. Sister. And now I can see her whenever I want. I'm never lonely. Correcchio. That's wonderful, Correcchio. Your love made it that impossible possible. Are you serious? Is this... Really a spirit? I told you. It's just delusional. <laughs> huh. What a sad girl who can't even believe in the power of love. Ew. Either way, he's totally out of his mind. I mean, he killed for a dead chick? Well, you know. Oh, you said you killed a lot already, right? So it wasn't just the kill two you killed here. What was that? What? <laughs> Seems like he was already crazy before he got here. Because? You didn't kill to escape from here. That wasn't even your purpose from the get-go. <laughs> you just wanted to slaughter a bunch, huh? Unacceptable. Uh, do not make me out to be some bloodthirsty, indiscriminate killer. I only kill girls who think that they are... Oh, what? I only kill girls who I think are worthy of being my sister's friends. Huh? Only girls i see so when we were deciding on who should be the medium before that let's choose a spiritual medium it would work best with a girl uh, um, you said it would work best with a girl I... I spent my time evaluating all of the girls here wonderful and besides maki and mew they were all worthy whoa so Maki and Mew weren't on the target list at all. <laughs> so literally, Tenko saved Himiko's life because he he would have killed Himiko. It didn't matter. All worthy of being my sister's friends. Mm -hmm. All worthy. Why you? Hey now, come on! I'm not included. I mean, it's not like I care. Then, then the second victim could have been me. Yeah, it could have been. Uh, Tenko d d died in place of me. Then I'll do it. I can't think of anyone but me that Angie's spirit should go in. No, I'll do it. Excellent. Himiko would have been great, but Tenko volunteering made me so happy. Her noble Ernest Hart made a perfect friend for my sister. Wonderful. She even infiltrated the student council to protect Himiko. Hmm. Huh? Huh? Infiltrate? Really? But... But how did you... <laughs> <laughs> it was obvious to me. I've studied many people. Uh, yes, can this she be? stood up against the darkness of the school all by herself. All for her beloved friend. Beautiful. I was so touched by that. Oh, wonderful. She was a perfect friend for my sister. <laughs> I can't understand why you like didn't like her, Himiko. Well, though, I was planning on having you become my sister's friend too. Eventually. No way. What? You do all that for? Mm -hmm. Wow, you did all of that just to kill. For you to go that far. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. But were you interested in the caged child? Just so you could kill someone, right? Let's see. It interested me as an anthropologist, of course, but more than that. For my beloved I sister. I wanted to kill for my sister. I could not deny the overpowering feeling. Are you okay? Kaido, are you okay? You look kind of pale. Uh, Don't worry about it. Let's just focus on Kyo right now. Allow me to explain. Though, I did not plan to kill both of them. 
I knew I would be having plenty of chances after escaping this place. However, But Angie walked in on me, preparing I ended up killing her in a different way. So I figured I may as well kill someone else too. <laughs> after all, it would be a shame if I just wasted the seance trick that I prepared. What is that? You're talking like you killed her just because you could. That's because he did. Mm. Kind of. He kind of did, though. No, no, no. Not just because I could. I was sending another friend to my sister. Correcchio. Correcchio. Uh, you're such a thoughtful little brother. But I'm... It's, it's bad to get greedy. Oh, dear. You're right. Because of that, now I can't send a hundred friends to my sister. <laughs> You do understand now that these were the circumstances for Karekio's crime. <laughs> I I do not understand. This is all too impossible for me to understand. Why? Th that right. Killing two friends for your dead sister. But how? That wrong. That's so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't get so worked up. There's something I learned after my sister's death. Do not worry. Death only changes the person's form. The soul lives on as a ghost. That's right. That's right. Even though I'm a ghost now, I'm always by Karekio's side. Sister. Thank you, sister. I love you. <clears throat> Cut it out already. What was I that? I don't understand anything you're saying. Nothing makes sense. It's not fair. Why did Angie and Tenko have to die for un something so unfair? Well... Because death itself is unfair. <clears throat> And deaths of unfair, and all deaths are unfair deaths. Why do you think news stations get such high ratings when they're reporting about death? <laughs> <laughs> because everyone likes unfair death. Maybe. Uh, well, if you look at it like that, this whole killing game embodies that philosophy, am I right? Uh, gifted high school students forced to play a killing game. Uh, <laughs> man, <laughs> if people were watching this, they would really get a kick out of it. If people were watching this, shut up! Knock it off the bullshit already. There's only sick fucks would enjoy a killing game. You got me. Hell yeah! If it wasn't in this killing game, I would have so much fun watching. Uh, so then, yeah, the nature of this killing game, yet. Shrouded in mystery. <laughs> but my role in it is over. I have finished my explanation to you, friends. Sister. I think I shall go see her now. My beloved sister. sister. I was unable to send her 100 friends. But at least I can see her now again. Correcchio. It is all right, my sweet Correcchio. Come to me. Oh. oh, looks like you've already prepared. Uh, now then, uh, let's get started. <laughs> It's the moment we've all been waiting for! Oh god. Huh? Punishment time? Sister. My beloved sister, at long last, I'll finally get to see you again. That's right. Yes, from now on, no one will try and stop us. We can be together without having to hide our love from others. What? Wait, I can't accept this. Therefore. Like I said, there's no such thing as a death that can be accepted. From an anthropological Why do you point think field? so many cultures have funeral rites? Why do you think rumors of ways to resurrect the dead never cease? Yes. The living is the must find a reason, however, forced to accept death when it happens. How you become to terms with death also determines how you live, yes. What was that? W what? I. That was how the answer I reached. Or that was the answer that I reached. How about you? How will you live in life that faces death? Now then, I have prepared, I have prepared a, a very oh. special punishment for the ultimate anthropologist Karekio Shinjuji. I, or Shinjuji. I will watch over you as a ghost, as your friend. I will watch over you. That's right. It won't be just me and Karekio. All of those who died will be watching. <laughs> I will be watching to see how you face the death of your friends. Humanity I'll be watching beautiful. forever and ever. It's Let punishment time! I am so curious how they're going to kill Kyo here. Karekio has been found guilty. Time for punishment.
Whoa. <laughs> okay. Cultural melting pot. The ultimate anthropologist execution. I feel like one of the monocups is gonna get kicked into the pot too. I'm gonna assume Monotaro, but I could be wrong. What? No, 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 no! I lost both of my besties. Oh. My. God. I need to get closer to the camera. Holy shit. You can see the fucking tears coming down. Hopefully, there, there was some tears shed on this one. Oh my god. What? The... And I don't know which one I'm more... I, it's, I hate it. I don't know which one I'm more sad about. Like... Both of my besties? Are gone. Correcchio, of course I was prepared for. But Monodom too? I... What the hell? I really hope I got close enough to the camera for you to see the two tears that were fucking shed. There was two of them. I wish I could like, like put like a bottle freaking right next to that. Just to have them just the, te just the tear, the bottle of tears shed of Danganronpa. But what? No, mother dog! Why? How can this what, what, what? To think that's oh my cute little child what commit suicide Yay! it's so cute no it's not Monokuma my both of my you took my both of my besties uh, I mean I got Maki right and like that'll be cool at least I, I but Maki and Kaido but you just took away Monodom, who was my favorite Monica by far, and again, Bestie. It's so freaking. 
freaking cute that he would kill himself because he couldn't get along. But he's... Uh. Yeah, he he wasn't forced into that. He ran into that. Monodom committed suicide? Had I have known this would happen, I would have been so much nicer to him. The only reason Monodom gets obsessed over getting along is because everyone but me bullied him. Right. Yes, the other Monokovs drove him to suicide, but not me. Hey. Um, uh, who's Monodom? Monotaro, shut the fuck up. Hmm? You already forgot him? That's kind of scary. Well, now. Well, it looks like another class trial is wrapped up without an incident, so... I'm going to take back this here Necromonomicon. Seeing as it was a waste, though, you guys sure you didn't want to use it? <laughs> you guys should have brought someone back to life and added them to your roster. Shut you? up. How long are you going to keep talking like that? I told you. Ignore him. This whole resurrection ritual was obviously a lie. He's just trying to shake up uh, us up mentally and get us to panic. The point? I am assuming that you will think another murder will happen if you do that, right? <laughs> you can say. Hmm. It's a waste. What a waste. If none of you are going to use it, then you should have let me have it. Then I could resurrect one of my dead siblings. Um. Yeah, but uh, the only one was Monosuke and Mono Kid at this point. Hmm? Which one? Well, I don't know. They were all pretty terrible, actually. Yeah, I mean, Monosuke and Mono Kid. I, I could go without either of them, honestly. Like, Mono Kid especially, but Mono, Mono Suke was pretty okay. Mm. Wait, did one of us die? I could have sworn it was just the two of us this whole time. Monotaro, shut the f- I am gonna- If you keep doing this, I'm gonna stop reading your fucking lines, honestly. Like, you were- Like, we cannot discredit Monodom. Monodom was a saint, and you needed to be a better fucking brother. Too bad that you missed your chance to raise the dead. That's what you get for doubting me. <laughs> Too bad. So long. Farewell. Uh, um. So, now he still talks about raising. Even now, he still talks about raising the dead. Always messing around. Man, this is stupid. What people believe in is up to them, but living people shouldn't have to suffer because of the dead. Of course. The living are more precious than the dead, no matter what. Hmm. <sighs> That's not something a coward like you should say. <laughs> Shut up and leave me alone. But, but there's one thing in this case taught that this case taught me. I thought there was a god watching over us, but <laughs> there isn't after all. Not in this academy. Mm. Yeah, you right. You're right. Well, that's why we have to face work together, right? Face it together. Our ultimate talents are the best weapons that we have. Go to do his best. Then God to do his best to keep everyone safe. God to want to protect everyone. Um, but your talent is entomology. <sighs> I don't want Suichi to use his ultimate talent anymore. I'm getting sick of these class trials. You're right. Ah, uh, yeah. You're right. <laughs> Maki's right. Hey, your talent as an assassin is way more trouble. <laughs> when are you going to use that, huh? I will look, work hard until everyone trusts my ultimate talent. Mm -hmm. Huh? That's right. It may not be possible now, but I'll put in the effort so that everyone can trust me. I, I won't run away anymore. I want to survive and escape this place with everyone. Maki. <laughs> I see. I wonder how long it'll last. What if your true calling is a killer show? Huh. Don't underestimate her. Maki Roll is one of my sidekicks. You're the sidekick, buddy. Got a minute? I don't remember being your sidekick. Also, didn't I tell you to stop calling me Maki Roll? You did. Oh. Oh, so you are close now? Is this supposed to be the powerful bond of friendship? Uh, but I would pre prefer it to happen sooner, especially after losing seven people. Holy shoot, that's how many we've lost already? Yeah. That's crazy. You right. Only nine people left now. <laughs> Well, what do you know? The dumbest can do basic math! Uh, that's right, seven pieces of shit have been pushed away and only nine remain! Actually. By that calculation, doesn't that mean that... Doesn't that make you one of the pieces? But... Just nine of us? Well, you know... Humans are like weeds, too numerous to count. Seven of us dead doesn't even mean that that much died in the end. Shit. That totally is what that heartless robot is thinking, right? Right? How rude! 
No, I'm not thinking that. Your blatant robophobia is simply just inexcusable. But you know. But hey, none of us gave up, right? I know we all are gonna escape. I'm not going to rely on gods, spirits, or the dead. I believe in you, you. Just in you guys. I believe in you all. Okay. Kaido. Well, of course. You're right. Those of us who remain can start over. Hey, hey. Hold up. Camboy needs to apologize to everyone for this whole student council thing. Hmm. And there's only one kind of apology that I'm willing to accept. How exciting. Yank your head off and smash it into the ground with all of your strength. Got that? No way. I have never heard such an intense formative apology. It seems like everything is settled for now. Even though we're missing her. You alright? Himiko, you okay? Anything Ganta can do to help, you can tell Ganta. Hey! I think we should let her have some space for now. That might be what's best for her. Okay. I remember how I felt. Oh. Oh. Ganta understand. You're so dumb. God, Himiko is such a liar! Oh my god, Kokichi, my god. Huh? huh? Because I'm a liar. Personally, I don't think lies are exactly a bad thing. But let's face it, you wouldn't have had any free will if this world was comprised of just the truth. But, but even then, I don't I don't think it's a good lot to lie to yourself, you know. Right? What are you saying? Think about Himiko's feelings a little bit. Nuh uh. I only said it because I thought about it. Because? Himiko's been lying to herself about her own feelings, so she's been holding back. Hey! Hey, what are you repressing? Why are you trying so hard to hold back? What? Hold back? I mean, yeah, Tenko mentioned this. Yeah, the, the, I don't know why we're getting it in here. I think we're... She said this in the do- I guess she must have said it multiple times. Expressing your feelings is perfectly natural. You shouldn't feel ashamed of it at all. So if you're thinking about crying while you're thinking- Or if you feel like crying while you're talking to Angie, go ahead and cry your eyes out. You'll feel better when you do. Well, I mean, <laughs> laughing makes you feel better too. And venting your anger onto someone or something can really cheer you up. Train your heart by crying, laughing, and venting your anger, Himiko. Tenko, Angie, I'm so lonely. I'm so lonely without you two. But I gotta survive. I, uh, I still can't go to where you are. But I'm lonely. I'm so lonely without the both of you. Himiko. Damn it. <laughs> Himiko cried for a long time. She cried as if she was releasing all of the emotions she had bottled up with inside. Before I knew, or before we knew it, as we lured, as if we were lured by her doing so, we all began crying. Meanwhile, Himiko's getting me too. Like, kind of, not necessarily, but she's, it's, the emotion is still there. I think a lot of it is just the empathy that I have for Himiko because I have so many people not like a lot but I'm one of those people that keep a tight knit circle and just imagining putting being put in the predicament that Himiko is where having besties go would be so devastating it would hurt and so having to come to terms with that is not an easy situation. And again, that was also part of the reason why Danganronpa could have gone the crazy route in making her the killer. But I'm very happy that they didn't. Because I'm excited to I'm, I'm excited to see what kind of character arc we're about to get out of Himiko. As the tears were shed, I can't even describe it. We were crying about what we could have been through, or what we had been through, and what had, was to come. Sadness, hatred, frustration, discord, anger, love, tears, filled with emotion. But at the very least, they weren't tears of submission. They were tears to push us forward.
After a while, Himiko finally calmed down, however. Is she hard to carry, Gonta? <laughs> God has got this. No, she fine. Yeah, God has got this. God is gonna put her to bed and it'll be good. She's sleeping very peacefully. Yup. She's all tuckered out after crying. Robots sleep well after leaking their oils too, right? I have told you many times that I do not use oil as my fuel source. <laughs> but wow, that really surprised me. She passed out as soon as she stopped crying. Yeah, but she looks so peaceful sleeping like that. She probably felt better after letting it all out, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, I understand repre having repressed emotions. I'm one of those people that will hide a bunch of shit um, and conceal it. And then it just breaks into a frenzy. So I, I completely vibe with that. Yeah, I hope so. Then Gonta carry Himiko to her room. You got this, Gonta. <laughs> Make sure you focus real good on your back, you hear me? You'll need that focus if you want to feel her little mosquito bites poking ya. There's no way he'd do such a thing. Gonta is a gentleman after all. Yup. While we were heading back to the dorms, I suddenly noticed Kaido had stopped in his tracks. Hmm. Kaido, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. hmm? Oh, nothing. I just wanted to get some night air. Don't worry about me. Go on ahead. Huh? Are you sure? Well. Anyway, don't you don't do something like this again, okay? If you just like scary things, then you should have said so earlier. I thought you were sick. <laughs> Oh, so you were worried about me. Yeah, we all were, Kaido. We, literally, we all were. Joy and I were freaking the frick out. We were worried about you, buddy. Yeah, worried about your stupidity. <laughs> Still haven't warmed up to me, huh? But Maybe not, but I feel like the walls we had up are coming down a little, you know? Perhaps those walls were her enemies. It seems she doesn't want to wait anymore. Got it. Yeah, and that's because of me. No, it's not, but it's okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, maybe you should... Maybe, but... You sound like you're bragging a bit, Ki or Kaido. Okay, he started it. I will give him credit. He started it, but... We we broke the walls down. You started. So, credit where credit's due. Huh. But, like I said, I'm gonna go get some air before I go back. You can go on ahead. Okay. Sure. Got it. See you tomorrow. Got it. Yeah, see you tomorrow. After our goodbyes, I returned to my dorm room. I didn't notice what was going... I didn't notice what was going on with Kaido. Cough. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Damn it. I don't have time to be dying. I still haven't gone into space yet. Yeah, he's not 100% okay. That's what Joy and I have been worried about for a minute now. We, like, his little, like, escapade into I'm scared of the paranormal. As much as we believed that, we knew there was more to this. B Joy and I both collectively were like, there's no way. There's no way it's just I'm scared of the paranormal. God damn it, Kaido. You need to also do the Himiko thing and let me know what the fuck is going on, boyfriend. I'm sorry, but, like, I know that I'm serious by nature, buddy. But I don't give a flying fuck. We are going to take care of you. Whatever we need to do, we need to take care of you, bud. Damn it. No way am I going to die here. No way. I swear to God, if it's chapter four again where my boyfriend fucking dies, I'm gonna be fucking pissed. <laughs> chapter fours are gonna be my least favorite chapters in Bang and Ropa if my boyfriend dies in both of them. <laughs> but it's fine. It, it is what it is. Oh, shit. Okay. 
Cleared chapter three. Obtain the mysterious mask. Do you want to save? Of course. And the next episode of Danganronpa V3, Killing Harmony, we are going to take on chapter four. <sighs> I hate... What, what The biggest thing that I've been on about lately for you guys is like... I hate that my brain has been just... I love hate, by the way. This is not just an I hate moment. This is I love hate. That my brain has... This game has gotten me so intrigued that my brain has just been swirling on multiple occasions and just picking up. This game is... Uh, for, for out of the other games, I've picked up a lot more of the nuance, right? And that's both scary as hell, but also amazing. Uh, from a story writing perspective because I think a lot of it is that and I've said it multiple times before in this game I I have an intense they they have made me have an intense care for each of the characters that my empath my empathic nature is making me worry it's making me be like, shit, we need to take care of this character. Shit, what's going on? And Himiko was a character that I did not have that connection to. And in this chapter, they have established that form of connection. Same with Kokichi. A character that I was like, ah, you're silly. You're funny. Uh, but as, as you saw, it, the fake death uh, like that happened last or two, uh, like a long time ago now, like a week and a half ago, I freaked out because I cared about Kokichi. Like, all the characters right now, and Kyo, and Monodom, the only character I don't care about right now is Monotaro. Even Monofany, I kind of pseudo care about. I don't care about her as much as the human characters. But out of all the human characters I care so deeply about that any sort of nuance, I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> Let me fix you. Let me do whatever I can to keep you alive. Like, the the genuine care is there unlike the other games because there was just in the other games the characters that i did not there there was characters i just did not care about that stayed alive um and just in general characters i did not care about i don't have that with a v3 and that tells you how good they have made this story that it i just i i have nothing but amazing things to say about this game so far and i'm excited for chapter four and to start that next time i know singing high praises but <laughs> see you then